And we begin tonight with a development in late breaking news. We first brought you at five o'clock. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood stepping down after an investigation into inappropriate comments about women. About 40 minutes ago, we received a new statement from City Manager Eric Walsh saying that that Chief Charles Hood, quote, admitted to making comments that are vulgar, disrespectful and demeaning to women. That statement goes on to say that, quote, this conduct would not be tolerated. Hood has overseen the San Antonio Fire Department since being sworn in in 2007. And Walsh is saying that he plans on meeting with the command staff and naming an interim chief by the end of next week. More developing in, in this story, we just got a statement from uh, Mayor Ron Nuremberg moments ago. It says, quote, I support the course of action taken by the city manager that led to the retirement of Fire Chief Charles Hood based on the findings of an independent investigation. It goes on to say no matter the department or environment, people will be treated with equal respect and dignity in our city. End quote. Again, that is the quote we got just a moment ago from Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Now more developing news tonight. A six year old girl has died. A family member currently the suspect and in custody. It happened this afternoon at an apartment complex just outside Loop 410 on the south side. San Antonio police say when they arrived, there was a lot of chaos between neighbors and family of the victim. And among that chaos was a female suspect who was naked and outside. Police aren't sure why she was not wearing any clothes, but tell us that she went into custody without any incident and is speaking with police. As for the six year old, SAPD's homicide unit is currently investigating how exactly the little girl died. This case is not obvious. There was not a weapon. Uh, there was no gun or gunshot wound to the victim. Uh, but again, the, the manner of death will be determined by the medical examiner. SAPD says the apartment unit where the six year old child died is now considered to all be a crime scene and they are waiting for a search warrant to continue that investigation. Of course, we'll continue to follow it. It is an unmitigated disaster, a catastrophe. And what's more tragic is that it's a disaster of the president's own design. Along the border today, House Speaker Mike Johnson blaming the crisis at the border squarely on President Joe Biden. Not all that surprising. He and more than 60 House representatives, all of them Republicans, spent the day in Eagle Pass. Our Daniela Ibarra is live there for the second night in a row. And Daniela, we want to know what those delegates, that delegation rather, said and did in Eagle Pass. But first, we have a new development on the border. The Justice Department is now suing the state of Texas over a new state law that allows law enforcement to arrest someone suspected of entering the U.S. illegally. Yeah, this is not one of the first policies that Governor Greg Abbott has had that has gotten pushed back. And Mike Johnson actually talked about that today. He was praising Governor Abbott for doing what he says the feds aren't doing, which are enforcing the laws here on the border. He noted the razor wire, the buoys, which you can see behind me. And he also said that the fact that the feds are constantly pushing back is, quote, absolute insanity. Now, while that press conference was going on, something interesting happened about 100 feet away. I want you to look at this video that we're showing you right now. A group of five migrants, including three kids, swam or I I should say walked across the river from Mexico. Border Patrol took them into custody during the press conference. Speaker Mike Johnson says states are having to take care of what he believes should be a federal concern. Now, Johnson says President Biden needs to step in now. We represent over half the U.S. states because every state in America is now a border state. And we've seen that on vivid display today. Now, this visit comes during what local officials tell me is a dip in migrants. On Monday, they reported having around 500 migrants come through the sector of the border, when two weeks ago, that number was 4,000. Daniela, you know, we talked about it a little bit last night as you did a preview of the uh, speaker's visit. There are a lot of people in Eagle Pass and beyond concerned that this congressional visit was just for show, just a photo op. What did the representatives have to say about that? Well, I asked them that and they said that this was for them to really learn about this issue. A lot of these representatives came from states that aren't border states. Uh, we had people from Michigan, from uh, other territories in the U.S., and they said that they wanted to come here and learn about everything that way. When they go back to Washington next week, they can start uh, writing legislation. 
Another representative, Tony Gonzalez, was there just two weeks ago, as you were, during what he called a historic surge of migrants. All those people crowded in the fields uh, behind you that we saw last night. They weren't there yesterday, though. So what did Gonzalez have to say about this visit? Well, he said he was glad that all these representatives came, all his fellow congressmen and women. He wrote a letter a couple weeks ago when we were here asking for congressional leaders to step up. That includes members of both sides of the parties, uh, or both sides of the aisle, I should say. And he said that the only one that responded was Speaker Mike Johnson. And that's why he was there. Daniela Ibarra live from Eagle Pass. Thanks, Daniela. Look out. Cut on camera tonight. San Antonio police say they are looking for these two people seen on a ring doorbell camera crashing an allegedly stolen vehicle into a home. This all happening just before 1230 this afternoon on Stanstone, Sandstone Way. That's not far from New Sulphur Springs Road. After the two men get out of that car, one of them comes back to get something out of the passenger seat. We spoke with a man who does construction in this area who claims he saw the two men running and tried to confront them but noticed one of them had a gun. He was holding the gun down like this. He tossed it up over the fence over here. Uh, and then his other uh, person that was with him decided to uh, pick it up and they ran off that way back towards the uh, old neighborhood that's behind us here. There were people inside the house at the time of the crash. Thankfully, no one was hurt inside the home. At last check, the two people in the car haven't been found. Out of 75 big cities across the U.S., San Antonio, one of just seven to receive a gold medal for public health policies. That data compiled by a group called City Health. They follow and rank nationwide policy solutions. Courtney Freeman spent the day breaking down each category that won a gold medal, as well as the areas that still need some work. Yeah, this is a big deal. Last year, we got an overall bronze medal, which is the lowest ranking. This year, San Antonio was the only Texas city to receive this gold medal. It means we're passing policies that improve the health and well-being of our community. Here's how it works. The data collection agency City Health says a city has to excel in at least five of 12 policy areas. San Antonio's five gold medals for 2023 are in affordable housing trusts, which is investing in building and maintaining affordable housing for everyone. Green space, ensuring all families, not just a few, have access to the benefits of public land and nature. Healthy food purchasing, making sure everyone has access to healthy food in public places where we work, play, and learn. High quality, accessible pre-K, safe spaces paving a way to high school graduation and beyond and smoke-free indoor air, including casinos, gaming venues, and bars. And most health departments across the United States are still under-resourced, mm -hmm. yet we're in a community where there's strong support by the local leadership, but also we've taken advantage of some federal grants. Metro Health Director Claude Jacobs says they're surviving the ripple effects of COVID. <laughs> There are some areas where San Antonio has slipped in the last couple years, like the complete streets category, making our roads more accessible and safe. We heard some of that in KSAT's Know My Neighborhood segments. There's chunks of, of the sidewalk just gone. As a matter of fact, we're going to move this interview off a little I'm bit like, because I don't feel safe. Around. I get nervous with when trucks pass by with the big old mirrors. It is a year-long endeavor. Mm -hmm. Some of these policies we realize will take a little longer. Right. But for now, we'll focus on the policies that we have shown to be most effective here in San Antonio. The goal this year, improving enough to hold on to that gold. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, San Antonio police are releasing some new security video that shows a potential person of interest in a deadly shooting last month. Take a look here. San Antonio police say the person seen here is a person of interest in the murder of 29-year-old Damian Franklin. According to SAPD, Franklin was shot several times in the 5800 block of Highway 151 sometime around 1 in the morning. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And tonight we're learning more about a crash involving a van transporting a prisoner. Police say the deputy driving that van may have actually ran a red light. It happened about 1030 this morning at Highway 90 and Loop 1604. According to San Antonio Police, the deputy driving a Calhoun County Sheriff's Office van T-boned by someone driving a silver sedan. A third vehicle swerved to avoid the crash ended up hitting a pole. 
Only two were hurt, the driver in the silver car and the prisoner that was in the van. Both are expected to be okay. San Antonio fire investigators looking into the cause of a fire that put a man in the hospital. This fire happened just before two this morning in the 800 block of San Bernardo Avenue. That's near Castroville Road. Firefighters had to rescue a man in his 40s from that home. He was taken to a nearby hospital for smoke inhalation and some minor burns. He is expected to be OK. No other injuries were reported. Take a live look outside right now. 51 degrees out there. Cloudy, overcast, we didn't have the rain from no, yesterday, though, Sarah. No, we didn't. There were no real damp spots out there, but tomorrow's going to stay cloudy, but we are going to have some areas of rain. Take a look outside right now. That's about a, the only bit of sun that San Antonio saw all day. It stayed cloudy in San Antonio while we saw sunshine out west toward Del Rio. The high today as a result of the clouds, only 51 degrees, 12 degrees cooler than the seasonable average. But we did have rain yesterday right along the catchment area of the Edwards Aquifer, and we've seen the aquifer respond up half a foot in the past 24 hours. More good news because of yesterday's rain. Mount Cedar is still high, but it's way down from where it was a few days ago. A few days ago, it was up past 20,000. Now it's down to 1,000. Molds are low. Here, what, here's what's up with the weather. Chilly and damp tomorrow. You'll have an issue with the evening commute tomorrow because of the dampness, but it will be sunny and pleasant by the weekend. And then I do want to highlight the very windy conditions early next week. Give you an early heads up for those windy conditions coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Let's check out traffic right now. We're going to go to I-35 in Judson, and you can see heavy traffic out there, especially on, I'm guessing that's the access road. You can see there's construction going along, uh, a lot of traffic lights and, you know, the give and take, but no major traffic tie-ups to tell you about. Happening tomorrow here on the news at six doc talk. It's our series featuring your medical questions. Any subject scan this QR code to let us know what questions you want us to ask local doctors. Case at 12's doc talk airs Thursdays at 630. Coming up in our next half hour after a busy 2023 in Bear County courts, 2024 doesn't seem like it's slowing down any. We're going over some high profile trials to look for in the new year. That's coming up at 630. But first, vapes don't look like a pack of cigarettes, even if their users are supposed to be the same people. We talked to local schools about whether they think new restrictions on e-cigarette marketing could help curb vaping problems in their schools. Next. E-cigarettes and other vapes are not supposed to be for kids, but they're in the hands and lungs of many high schoolers anyway. A new state law, though, is hoping to curb advertising that some believe is targeted to kids. Garrett Berger asks some local schools if they think this will help. Splashed with bright colors and offering an array of flavors, most vapes don't look much like a pack of smokes, even if they are supposed to be for the same people, adults. When it's so uh, overt and explicit, in who they're targeting, uh, I'm glad that Texas took action in this case. As of January 1st, it's illegal in Texas to market or sell e-cigarette products in containers that show cartoon characters that mimic ones aimed at minors, that mimic the trademark or look of kids' products, that include symbols primarily used to market to kids, that include a celebrity's image, or include an image of food like candy or juice. Northside and Northeast ISDs have both had hundreds of vaping violations this school year. Both districts hopeful this could help. Hopefully, because we are working on that intervention side, we'll get some traction. I'm optimistic. I think a little bit of trickling in of different pieces that all come to an amalgamation of one larger holistic, you know, lowering the numbers. And the marketing professor tells us it would be long term dividends. I mean, look at when we enacted legislation on um, cigarettes and smoking. It took uh, decades for that to filter down. But the law also specifies this is about nicotine. The majority of both districts' vape cases this year have been for THC. You know, if we thought about this in a, in a sense maybe 20 years ago where you have um, students who were using marijuana in the bathrooms to the same level that they use these vapes in our bathrooms, you would have a community outcry at this point. Another part of the vape cloud floating over schools across the country. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News.
All right, let's turn to the forecast now. The rain's gone, but the clouds are certainly hanging with us. Sarah. They are. It was a cloudy day, and by the way, we are going to have more rain tomorrow, just not quite as much as what we saw yesterday. I want to take a look, though, at high temperatures across the KSAT 12 viewing area. What a difference some sun makes out near Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Laredo, there was plenty of sunshine today. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. Here in San Antonio, it stayed cloudy. 16 degrees cooler in San Antonio with a high of only 51. 51 in Kerrville, and it was only in the 40s in Rock Springs. Well, tonight we're going to be in the 40s, and we'll see completely cloudy skies once again by midnight. It's going to be chilly uh, with a wind from the east northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at the weather setup. Texas in a bit of a break from the rain. You can see that there are two systems surrounding us, one working its way across areas nearer to the Atlantic, the other out in uh, parts of California, Nevada, Utah, getting some snowfall. This is our next rain chance, which will be arriving tomorrow by the afternoon. So the first part of the day tomorrow, relatively quiet, but by the second half of the day, we're going to have some areas of drizzle and light rain. Here's a look at the future cast. This is tomorrow early in the morning. Once again, cloudy all day tomorrow for us in San Antonio. By about two o'clock, we'll see some areas of drizzle develop around San Antonio, and that will become more numerous by the evening commute. So a lot of kids heading back to school for the first time tomorrow. That evening commute is going to be a little messy. We're going to have areas of dampness out there. Give yourself a little extra time and a little extra patience to where you need to go tomorrow evening. That will continue into the later evening and overnight hours when we'll have some scattered light rain. I do not expect rumbles of thunder or anything like that. Just some scattered light rain for us. But by Friday morning, all that rain is going to be out of here and we'll actually have a very pleasant weekend after a few chilly days that we've been dealing with the last couple of days. So early tomorrow morning in your case at 12 hour forecast, some patchy fog, cloudy skies again, fairly quiet during the first part of the day, but it's afternoon that drizzle will develop and we'll see that become more numerous by the evening hours, a high tomorrow of only 50 degrees. So again, very similar to today. It'll only be 49 in the Hill Country in Kerrville and in Bandera in the low 50s further south down near Pleasant and 52 in Seguin and New Braunfels. Take a look at the temperature trend though over the next several days. Remember I said how it's going to clear out on Friday. It will be much more pleasant by the weekend. We're talking highs in the mid to upper 60s with beautiful low humidity, plenty of sunshine, a great weekend to enjoy some time outdoors and to prepare because on Monday and Tuesday it is going to get windy. Here's a look at the windy forecast on Monday starting right at about the early afternoon. It'll just be getting windy in San Antonio, but very windy out closer to Del Rio. Then by Monday night, this is a look at the potential wind gusts up in the hill country. We could see wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour overnight Monday into Tuesday. You'll really start to hear the winds. We could see wind gusts in San Antonio up to 40 to 50 miles per hour Monday night into Tuesday morning. So remember that beautiful weekend. Take that time to actually put up those outdoor Christmas decorations because it's going to be very windy Monday and Tuesday. And with those winds uh, that windy, that could even cause some issues with some lightweight patio furniture, some very light carports, those kinds of things. So we wanted to give you an early heads up as your weather authority. All right. Thank you, Sarah. All right. It's already been a great turnaround. But imagine if they actually could make the playoffs. We're talking about the Houston Texans, Larry. Yeah, they were not expected to be in this spot in the final week of the regular season. But yet the Houston Texans are right here. They're playing at the Colts. The playoffs are on the line for them. And in high school football, James Peoples from right here in San Antonio is getting to hang out with some fellow Ohio State commits coming up. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. It all comes down to the regular season finale for C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans. If they beat the Colts and the Jags lose or tie, then the Texans will win the AFC South. Or they can grab a playoff berth with a win or a tie, along with a Jacksonville loss plus a Pittsburgh loss or tie. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Back in week two, the Colts beat the Texans 31-20 in Houston. And Stroud says this team is different compared to the one back in September. I think I've grown a lot in a lot of different places. Um, I think our team has grown as a whole. Uh, I think we've um, put a, a, a multitude of games together to make our team um, really kind of 
stick like glue. Like we, we've come into a, a great situation of like now we're starting to pick up our chemistry better than ever. So um, it's like night and day from week two to now. So the Colts will host the Texans Saturday night at 715 right here on Case at 12. Number 20, James Peoples is hard at work getting ready to play in the 2024 All-American Bowl Saturday at the Alamo Dome. The Veterans Memorial High School running back is a four-star recruit and will play for the East Squad. One of his teammates is five-star recruit and wide receiver Jeremiah Smith from Chaminade Madonna Prep out of Florida. He's jersey number four. Smith is ranked the number one overall player in the nation, and he's going to Ohio State, where he'll be a college teammate with Peoples. James, I mean, he's a great, great, uh, great guy. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't really, you know, talk to him as much, like, doing my recruitment process, but actually being around him and stuff like that, you see he's a definitely a great, 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 great kid. Uh, we want the best, we want the best for us, so you mean, we want, got goals for ourselves. So, I mean, I mean, just me and him talking, I mean, he's a cool, cool person. I mean, we definitely going to be bonding a lot more at Ohio State for sure. Building those connections with guys, especially my own teammates that I'll be going to Ohio State with here in about a week, um, it's definitely cool, you know, because I'm going to be rooming with some of them guys like JJ, Ian, Garrett, so. And even other guys are going to other colleges, you know. I mean, it's just great because these are bonds that you can build that will last for a lifetime. You don't know. Also going down on Saturdays, the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game at the Dome. Yesterday, we stopped by Team Gold practice at Heroes Stadium where the weather forced the guys to hold a walkthrough under the stands. This is a great shot for 117 area student athletes to play one more high school game while also showing college scouts what they can do. Like I told the guys, um, let's just keep on grinding. Like for some of us, this is our last high school game. Let's grind. Uh, in practice, let's not take plays off. And I'm happy I'm on the team with some of them Judson and Steel guys. I'm happy I'm on the team with them. I think it's a great opportunity for guys that don't have that next level interest yet. Um, we've heard so many stories of guys that haven't had that and got it from this game. So uh, I think it's an encouragement to all the players and just a great opportunity for everybody. The All-American Bowl will kick Saturday at noon at the Alamo Dome, followed by the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game at 5 p.m. In boys high school basketball, Judson played at Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial last night. Here's Rockets big man Ivan Dorn Jr. down low going lefty layup for two, and the Rockets lead by five. Later on, the Rockets with good ball movement until Chris Gooden Jr. drains a Judson three ball, and the Rockets went on the road 65-60, improving to 14-7 on the season. Good to talk to all those high school kids who yeah. some of them have scholarship offers, some of them hoping to get some. Absolutely. And yeah. there have been a lot of kids who played in this game, like Mesa just said, that got an offer after they played it. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty cool. On the line. Open up some eyes. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Coming up after the break, there will be no shortage of court drama this year as more than a dozen cases will be watching closely. Coming up after the break, we have a breakdown of some of those cases and who could be going to trial in 2024.